When you're designing a collection, a lot of the time you put so much time and focus on designing that color can sometimes be an afterthought. But in fact, color should get just as much attention as your designs. So today I'm talking about color and how to create a color board in Illustrator. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mikkel Drew Pelham, digital fashion specialist teaching digital fashion design and communication. If you like geeking out and learning about digital fashion software and design communication, this is a channel for you. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. So color, it's the one thing that can make your customers very happy. And it's also the thing that can make your buyers a little fearful. Color can be very subjective and sometimes you can take a big loss if you get it wrong and a really big win when you get it right. If you check out this video, I talk more about what you should be considering when you choose your color. But today I want to focus on how you create a color board to creatively show the palette. Now many designers, because you're dealing with pictures, tend to do this step in Photoshop. However, because the board I'm creating is pretty simple and I'm not doing a lot of color changes, I'm going to do this in Illustrator. Now, I showed you the steps to creating a fashion mood board in this video. And some of the same steps apply for your color board. You'll pull together photos that are relevant to your concept, but also reflect the colors you wanna use as well as how you'll be using them. And what I mean by that is, if you're planning to use red as an accent color, this is probably not the best picture to use on your color board because the picture is mostly red. This would be a better picture because you only see the red in small areas. Similarly, if red is a main color that you plan to use as a full body color or in tops and bottoms so that it would be worn head to toe, that first picture would be the better option. So make sure you not only consider what colors you're using, but also how you plan to use them within your collection when you're choosing the pictures for the color board. So this is a board I created for a collection focused on Afrofuturism, and I'm going to show you how I created this. Notice that there's only three pictures on this board, and keep in mind that you don't need a lot of pictures. In fact, many designers use just one picture for their color board. So for this board, I'll be using five main Illustrator tools and functions. The selection tool, the clipping mask, shape tools, the type tool, and blending modes. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to add to the board is the dream scene photo taken from the scene from Black Panther. I'm using this picture as is, so I'm just going to copy and paste it onto my board and then resize it and move it into place using the selection tool and the bounding box. One thing I want to point out here, because it was an issue that constantly came up in my classes this semester, is that I will always recommend opening the file and then copying and pasting it onto the new board. If you drag and drop, which a lot of my students did, you'll see an X across the picture. What that means is that the picture is linked and not embedded into the file. It results in a smaller Illustrator file, but if you move that picture or you share this Illustrator file with someone else, the picture won't show up. So instead, either copy and paste, as I mentioned earlier, or if you're going to drag and drop, make sure you embed the picture by selecting it, scrolling to the bottom of the properties panel and choosing embed. You just wanna make sure that you get rid of that X. Next, I'm going to add the picture on the left side. I'm calling that one mother. And again, use the selection tool and the bounding box to resize it. And to remove the extra white border on the picture, I'm going to use a clipping mask. The nice thing about a mask is that it hides part of the photo but doesn't get rid of it completely. So if I change my mind later, I can still make the hidden part of the photo visible. Always start by making a selection and then add the picture to the selection. Right mouse click and choose Make Clipping Mask. And if you don't have a right mouse button, you can also do this through the menus by choosing Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Then again, use the selection tool and the bounding box to resize the picture as needed.
For the last picture of the artist, the original has a background that I deleted so I could just focus on her. Now I did do a little work in Photoshop before I brought the picture into Illustrator. And if you want to see two quick methods to do this, you can watch either of these videos. But after getting rid of the background, I'll add her to the board and resize as needed. Now I'm going to create the straight white line that separates the dream scene from the mother artwork. And you can either use the line segment tool or pen tool for this. Make sure it's stroked only, no fill, and adjust the stroke weight as needed. Then rearrange the artist, bringing her to the front so she's in front of the line. And notice I'm not putting her on a separate layer. I'm just using the rearrange options, bring to front. Next, add the color chips. And usually before I do this part, I save all my colors into the swatches panel. And most of the colors I sample directly from the pictures. So choose the eyedropper tool and click directly on the color that you want to be a part of your palette. Then use the rectangle tool and create the rectangular color chips across the bottom of the page. I usually start with the primary colors, then secondary and accent colors, making the chips smaller for each type of color. And sometimes designers will even add the finished colors to the board as well, which is part of the reason the artist is on the board. All the metal finishes in the collection will be gold. So I'll add that as well as the smallest chip. Last things I need to add to this board are the color names and the board title. And for the title, I'm adding a blending mode and duplicating it so it gives the title a little more depth and interest. And that's it. Remember to make the sizes of your color swatches larger and smaller, depending on whether you're using them as primary, secondary, or accent colors. So a person looking at your board can quickly tell which colors are the main colors and which are the accents. And you may notice the metallic gold color chip looks a little different than the others. I use a gradient fill, not just a solid color, which many people use for metals or anything that shows shine. One other thing, all of these pictures are things I found on the internet and at least two of them are created by independent artists. So make sure you credit them, particularly if you're going to share this on the website, on YouTube, any place publicly. If you're interested in the artists featured on this board, their information is in the description. Unfortunately, there's one picture whose information I didn't get at the time I found the picture, which is years ago now, and I can't find the artist's information. So if anyone happens to know, please add it to the comments so I can add to the description. Always remember that your board should serve a purpose, not just be pretty presentations. And the purpose of the color board is to continue telling the story of the concept and clearly show not only what colors you plan to use in the line, but which ones will be main garment colors and which ones will be accents or trim. Thanks for watching today's video. If you're new to Illustrator for Fashion Design, make sure you check out the links in the description to take a class with me. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.